All right, greetings and salutations. Uh, today I'd like to show you how to make a one part mold, uh, which is you're just gonna be engraving one piece of aluminum and then you use a flat stock for the other piece with just holes drilled in it to uh, be able to inject your part. And the flat material will push up against it and you'll have a flat surface on one side and an engraved, your engraved surface on the other. So, what I'm using is Fusion 360 and some free uh, 3D mesh models from Pocket Tactics uh, that I found online. And they wanted you to 3D print them, but I thought I'd do them one better and inject them. Uh, so I figured I'd start small and start with their bases. So first thing you want to do is uh, create a box and this is going to be your uh, stock. So whatever size your stock material you're going to engrave is going to be, uh, that's what you should make uh, this box to be. Then you're going to want to import, which is the insert, import the mesh of the uh, models you want. And I'm going to do water and forest. And I don't think I can do two. No, nope, we'll do water first and it's going to want you to set your unit type and this one is in millimeter oh look at that <laughs> adjust this to be oh i didn't use water for my other one but whatever you get the idea you want it to be um level here but you notice you want the detail to be facing down into your material i'm going to go ahead and move this that was a right click, by the way. And uh, we want to get it to just barely not be touching the surface. Move it wherever you're going to, because uh, what you're going to do is you're going to turn this into a, you're going to turn this mesh body into a body and then subtract it from your stock, essentially. Now, before you can convert this uh, into something usable, uh, you first have to turn off design history. Don't ask me why. There we go. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to convert your mesh to a B rep. Okay. There we go. Now it's a B rep. Now, now you need to convert that into a B rep so you can actually do the subtraction. Uh, so anyways, once you do that, turn your design history back on. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do the modify, combine, and the target body is the main body, this guy, and the tooled body is going to be our new one, and the operation is going to be to cut. I believe that's how it works and it's showing it red so I think that is correct there it goes all right so there you go and you can see in the so now you have your part this is what you want to make this is the mold you made your mold here I made two and I spaced them out evenly and did a little bit of time on it but this is about as easy it has to be <clears throat> so after you have your model created like we just did uh, you go into the cam portion of your studio here, of the studio. Oops. And why? And then what this is for is on your CNC machine. You're going to tell your CNC machine what to do. So this is what I set up to do. It, it, there's a tutorial under the help here. Um, if you do the Learn Fusion 360, you can go ahead and there it is. The cam, and I. This four minute video, I looked it over like four or five times, taught me everything I needed to do uh, in order to figure out how to uh, to get the cam to work. So I'm gonna recommend doing that and going through that process and um, have it do a coarse run through and then have it do a fine run through. And I had it do an adaptive, um, an adaptive run. The reason it's mad at me is because I have this um, new piece here and it's like I don't know what to do with that when you're all done it shows you how to oh my gosh it shows you what it'll do and I don't know why it does this but apparently it um, but apparently it likes to cut in a circle right before it goes down 
Um, this this is why this tool is handy because you get to see kind of what your tool path, what your tool is going to do uh, before you actually have it go and engrave um, your material. This is where you set your I made my two bits, my 0.75 inch uh, flat bits that I used, flat end mill. Um, and then editing, make sure you set whatever your spindle speed is going to be. Uh, this this is calculated for you. Um, set what you want the cutting feed rate to be for, and you got to know the material you're going to use, a specific type of aluminum, and uh, the bit and the travel speed you want to do. So all these numbers come into play, and it helps you figure it out. But you got to know a little bit about what's going on. Um, this is this is where you pretty much set how you want the cam to work is by editing your adaptive control. And like I said, that one tutorial goes over that. So to get your cam set up, I recommend checking out the Learn Fusion 360. All right, then after that, all you do is hit the post process, create the G-code, fancy G-code, uh, and then dump that on your CNC machine, which for me, it's Mach 3. Um, it lets you do a bunch of different options. So sure, whichever CNC machine you have, it'll kick it out for it. Put it on there, set up your stock, and uh, then get turning. So uh, let's uh, go do that. And uh, by the way, uh, Mach 3, which is what I'm using, uh, it, it I have the piece in there. You can see it right here. Um, it, it shows you the tool path, which is nice is you can then relate that to your workpiece, set the point, and then when you look at the screen, it shows you when you are on your pieces. So there's an edge. All right, the piece is running. See what it does. All right, so I originally tried doing it with one pass, and I kept breaking the bits. I broke two of them before I decided, hey, maybe I should just take off 0.3 millimeter layers at a time. Worked out way better. Yeah, look at that probably see the detail way better all right so it left a, a few little nubs so I'm just gonna head and go ahead and, and rough those out I really should have made a bunch of uh, uh, cleaning steps after this but uh, the only other thing I'm gonna do is uh, brush this out with some steel wool All right, there we go. That looks uh, pretty good there. Another three inch strip right here. It's just gonna be a blank and it's gonna go right on top of it uh, with two holes right where this will be and then with a little slot milled out for the injection molder. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll inject the parts. All right, someone gave me a brilliant idea. Doesn't always work out, but you get the idea. All right, so on a previous mold, I had in uh, some sprues here. Uh, but this mold, I want to try it without the sprues to see how well it'll go. <laughs> Overshot. And look at that. There we go. Pretty nice, huh? Just got to cut the little nub off and uh, good to go. All right, here's a couple of our injected parts. So, as you can see, the detail is really nice. Uh, it's it's as good as the bit you use, really. Um, so these models were actually intended to be 3D printed. Printed. That's what the authors wanted you to do. So here's a couple 3D prints of this guy right here. The quality is uh, by far superior to the uh, injection molded or the 3D printed part. Excuse me. <coughs> well. That's about all the time I have, so uh, till next time, I'm the Ill-Informed Human.